All right, earlier I mentioned that there's something going on in the field behind us. You know, it looks like a beautiful field of soybeans, but there's a little spot out there that looks a little bit different. Well, we have poor drainage, and whenever you have poor drainage on your farm, over time, what's going to happen is your soil pH will end up creeping up. And what we found on our own farm is it more than creeps up. We have some soil pHs, or we've had some soil pHs as high as 8.5 on our farm. And when you have high soil pH, typically people are going to tell you, well, there's nothing you can do about it. You just need to give up and hope for the best every year. Maybe plant some <laughs> varieties, maybe, uh, you know, try this product or that um, product you know, and I, make things better. I'm not buying into any of that. Yeah. I, I want to fix the problem. We've got a problem. This is the great thing about farming. Let's say that you own some land or you have a long-term lease on some land. It always pays to fix the problem rather than just treating the symptoms because you're not just going to benefit from it this year. You're going to benefit from it for the next who knows how many years. If you're farming like, like Brian and me, we, we're going to benefit the whole rest of our farming career and then our kids are probably gonna benefit from the same thing that we fixed for their whole farming career. And here's the whole thing. We're in a series right now talking about how to read a soil test and what are the most important things you need to deal with in soil. We're talking about soil pH first because it is more important than anything else. It's more important than nitrogen. It's more important than phosphorus. It's more important than compaction, than tillage, than anything. Soil pH is number one, okay? And if you have an 8.5 pH, guess what? You're already giving up a third of your yield before you ever even start the year. Third of it, gone. And you may still be getting good yields. You may say, you know what? I've got 8.5 pH, but I still get 200 bushel corn and 60 bushel beans. Well, guess what? You should probably have 250 bushel corn At least. and 70 or 80 bushel beans. You say, wait a minute, that's crazy talk. No, it's not. If you fix something that's hurting your yields like soil pH, it limits the bacterial activity in the soil. So breaking down chemicals, making nutrients available, all those things are limited when your pH is high. Yeah, and just in terms of nutrient tie-up, in terms of root growth, there are a lot of things going on in the soil. The point is, if you've got high soil pH, you've got to fix it. The way you fix it is you tile. I mean, you can also do things like deep tillage with the zone builder, stuff like that, but tiling is the number one thing if you've got high soil pH. I'll give you an example. Just on the other side of where we're at right now is some ground that I own. I tiled it eight years ago. It was eight and a half pH in the low grounds. Guess what? Now it's down to seven. We've changed it that dramatically in eight years. You can do the same thing. All right, so that's how you fix high pH soil. Let's talk about low pH soil quick. Well, thanks, Brian. You give me the easy one. You serve up that softball for me because actually the field that we're talking about here with the high pH also had low pH issues. Okay, let's start with this. A 7 pH is neutral. A 6 pH is 10 times more acidic than a 7. And a 5 pH is 10 times more acidic than a 6 or 100 times more acidic than a 7. So if you have a 5 pH like we did right across the road here, it's a really big deal and it's gonna pay you a great return on investment to fix it. The way you do in low soil pH is to add lime. That's it, it's that easy. Yeah, but how did it get that way in the first place? I mean, was it naturally that way? And what do we do so it doesn't happen again? Well, no, the soil was not naturally that way. When you go in the fence lines in undisturbed ground, the soil pH is close to neutral. So we, we must have started with neutral soil out in that field, and it's just gone down over time. Typically what we see is we're running into places where we've put on large amounts of nitrogen fertilizer. That helps to lower the pH a little bit, but the thing that's even bigger for us has been compaction issues. We get compaction issues, and we get roots only going down six or eight inches deep. We get a ton of roots in that top six or eight inches, and they're kicking out organic acids trying to make nutrients available for the plant. So we've got all and that- the organic acids lower the soil pH, that's the thing. And we've got all that going on in the top six inches. When you go on deeper soil profiles, once you get down 12, 18, 24 inches, they're closer to seven again. So we just need to influence that top probably six or maybe 12 inches of soil by adding some lime, we can lower the pH and over And the time. point is, if you can or raise reduce, the pH over time, yeah, sorry. And, and the point is, if you can reduce that compaction and get more roots growing down deeper in the soil, the organic acids will be spread through lots of soil instead of just the top few inches, so we won't have that pH reduction. The way nature intended. Well, once again, soil pH is the most important thing you can look at on a soil test. It's the most important thing in your soils. Get to know what your soil pH is and make sure you're testing different areas of your field separately. Don't just do a big composite test, because 
like in our field just right across the road here, we had 8.5 pH and 5.1 pH in the same field. You need to sample those areas separately and determine what the problem really is and fix those problems individually. And when you're looking at different areas of the field, you may find our weed of the week. It's a tough one. We'll show you how to control it coming up next.